Hello and welcome to another episode of Bristol Community Cooking. Bristol Community Cooking is a cooking show created by Bristol Community College, where you will get introduced to a restaurant in the South Coast region. You will also meet the owner and the chef of a restaurant and understand their background and the story behind their entrepreneurial journey. The show also features a cooking demonstration of a signature dish from the restaurant in collaboration with the Bristol Culinary Arts students. My name is Chef Esteban Martinez and I am the chair of the Culinary Arts program at Bristol Community College. It is one of the oldest culinary arts programs in Massachusetts and we offer associate degrees and short-term certificate programs in culinary arts and baking and pastry. In today's episode of Bristol Community Cooking, we are going on a different path, featuring a pastry shop called Europa Pastries and Coffee Shop, located on 65 Columbia Street in Fall River. The bakery has been in existence since 1998, when their previous owners decided to put the business for sale, Kevin Cuoto, his wife Erica, and his brother-in-law, Andrew Ferreira, purchased it five years ago in 2018. While Europa is most known for its traditional Portuguese sandwiches and Portuguese pastries, the menu actually extends well beyond that. I am very excited to introduce Kevin, the baker and co-owner of the cafe. Welcome Kevin, how are you? Good to you, thank you for having me. Uh, before we get into the actual cooking demo, could you tell us a little bit about your story in Europa? Sure thing, thank you for us having us. Uh, my story is my, originally my family comes from the Azores, St. Michael's. I, all three of us are first generation born here in America. Okay. So uh, the way, uh, and now normally now we wound up all having different parts. We enjoy our heritage, which is from Portugal, and we encompass all of that into what we do and what we love in Europa. Uh, about five years ago, Europa went up for sale, and since we enjoy our love of baking and cooking, as well as a coffee we, it was a no-brainer. We decided to buy it immediately, and the rest has been history us with us there. Great. Can you tell us a little bit about the food at Europa? So the food is originally, like you said uh, earlier, was predominantly Portuguese-based, which is our heritage, which we enjoy and encompass a lot of it. Um, but as the name of Europa is, we wanted to embrace all of Europe in it, so we eventually we expanded into French, Italian, German, as Swedish, and other countries as well. Are any of your recipes family recipes? So yes, there is family recipes. We have a casella, our Portuguese soup, as well as some of the pastries is family recipes we brought yep. down from us, uh, which we've used and enjoyed making there quite often. So Kevin, are there any unique ethnic ingredients in the Portuguese cuisine that our viewers may not be aware of? So all the uh, ingredients that we do use, there is actually nothing unique. It's all checking the traditional bit spaces that would be used, such as saffron in our dishes, so nothing unique out of the, out of the equation. We just make it, you know, traditionally proper and the best that we can make it. Awesome. All right, Kevin, that sounds delicious. So what are you preparing for us today? Today we are making a queijada de feijão vermelho, uh, which is a uh, translated to red bean tart, which ironically enough does not use any red beans. <laughs> okay. What kind of beans do you use today? Uh, we actually use navy beans. Okay. All right. So let me introduce you our student today, which is Johnny Lima. Hello. He's going to be assisting you in making uh, your dish for today. And without further ado, I'm going to give you the kitchen and then I'll look forward to tasting it afterwards. All right. Thank, thank you. you. All right, so today we're going to be cooking with two cups of dry beans and six cups of water. Okay. Uh, we tend to use dry ingredients. Right. You know, you could use uh, two cans and it'll do the exact same thing for at home, but we always like using natural ingredients when All you right. cook and bake. So. to do that. Okay. Yeah. So six cups of water. And. And two cups of. And how long do you cook it for? It normally cooks between about 45 minutes to about 15 minutes to cook to get them all finely. Okay. All right. Okay, the beans are already cooked for 45 minutes. They've already been uh, drained. Uh, and they're right now currently at room temperature, as you can well see. Okay. So, what's the next step? The next step is we're gonna wind up actually oh, okay. grinding them. If you don't have a grinder, uh, any type of thing to pulsate it, to just to, you want it to make them to like a puree form to break it all down. So that's the, what we're gonna wind up doing right now. 
much all of it? Yep, all of it. Okay. If it's too dry, you just gotta just add a little bit of water to it and it'll help break it down to push it down to get that consistency of like a puree. Can we look at, okay. It's not too thick, not too thin? Yeah, just. be fine as much as you need to make it work. There we go. So that helps. Oh, okay. That will help make it easier. No sun stuck in the bottom. So you want all of it and gone, right? Like yeah, it's got to be all gone. All so there's chunky. no beans. Yeah, because if beans not, you could have the beans. When it winds up creating the caramel, it's gonna okay. be like picture like jello. Okay. And the thing's just gonna be frozen okay. in there. <laughs> right. You're gonna have like chunks of beans. Yeah, you don't want that, so I you're trying it. to break it all apart. Got it. It's almost done though. Yeah, it takes a while, don't worry. Like pasty. Yeah, that's good. Right. There we go. We got it. Oh yeah, that's perfect. All right, so where do you want that? Yep, that's what we want. And that's pretty much the consistency you want. Nice paste. Okay. okay. So what's the next step? Next step is we're gonna make the caramel, which okay. is great because if you ever want a caramel, okay. <laughs> we right. can make it. We need is uh, two cups of sugar and one okay. cup of water. Okay. Which we put it in. And then we got the sugar. Just gotta make sure it's all slowly incorporated all in there properly. And this is how you guys do it over there, right? Yeah, this is how exactly how we do it. We wind up making caramel. And how long does that usually take? Um, this should take about 15 minutes, hopefully, to do all this the caramel. It's to start coming in. It's gonna start coming out usually dark, and then you're gonna want it's the red color. Once it starts caramel, uh, getting red into it, is when you're gonna want to add the beans into it. The red is what eventually becomes Get the, the color, color of the red, the beans, okay. which is why it's red. The name comes, it comes from. from. Makes sense, okay, makes <laughs> sense. All right. All right. Yeah, we can just let it sit there, slowly start caramelizing. 
So the water helps, right? Yeah, the water helps make it, uh, the caramelization. You could just do straight sugar, but when you do that, it yeah, winds up it hard, hard water, really, yeah. yeah. All right, so like your number one seller at the restaurant, is it that or? No, the number one seller would be our Pastel Donata. Uh, it's our most popular. Yeah. yeah. It's the one our award for us forever, so. Oh, really? So, yeah, so. I mean, yeah, it's Portuguese love for Donata. And then like when you make it over there, you use like big pot. Yeah, we do. We normally use it like in a big giant soup pot, so okay. we're making large quantities. And like, do you go like early in the morning to make it? To I'm be there open? at one o'clock in the morning, yeah, so I'm early. Like, and that's crazy. I'm there uh, early in the morning. I have a friend of mine. He works at the bakery, so he said three o'clock in the morning baking pop section every single morning. That's what I go in for. Yeah. I have to make the bread early, so I go. Make, got, I make bread there. We have an artisan bread that I make, so I have all that. And then as that's rising and all and this other stuff, stuff, I'm making other stuff. So do you have like a, is like a restaurant or just like a bakery slash pastry thing? So it's a combination. We okay. have the the pastry side, so it's all that, but then we have all the sandwich, the cafe menu okay. stuff. Like people sit and eat a little People sit there and eat, so they so. have all that. Yeah. Like what made you decide like buy a pastry, buy a, uh, pastry thing, like a, like a love, bakery? I love pastries. You love pastry? I, have, I was born with a sweet tooth. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> So I loved it, and then cooking was always one of those things, hands-on, always had fun, and, and I used to always do it at home, and then it was just one of those. Yeah. It, it came up, and I was like, yeah, we all looked at it. Yeah. I was like, yeah, we gotta go for it. And to me, I guess same thing, too. Growing up in a small home, Cape Verde, it's like, you know, oh, yeah, so fish. You know exactly. I eat fish all the time. All we need is fish, fish and beans. Fish. Like fish and beans, especially when it rains, I'm excited, because you got beans, you know what I mean? <laughs> you can have rice, bright rice, fish, and beans. That's, that's what you grew up on. Yeah, it's yeah. like a lot of beans. No, those uh, big beans, small beans, like all green beans. Beans, yeah. Okay, for it's Similar. Farming, yeah. It's kind of yeah. So. Yeah, a lot of fish and Excited. beans rice. Now we're going to add the... Add the, uh, the bean paste. The bean to it. Yep. Just add it in slowly. Just be careful. Yep. It's hot. Yeah, so it's gonna sometimes flash back, so just take your time. Go slow. You mix it? Yep, and now we're gonna let's get in. Gotcha. If you wanna use a thing to make it easier for you to hold it. And there we go. Oh okay, I see the color. Yeah, it gets all red. Well that's where it gets the color from. Once everything is all incorporated. It's all in there really good, yeah. The only thing we're gonna do now is just add as a stick of butter to your mix. Does it matter if it's, it has to be room temp or? Oh, it the doesn't butter. really matter if it has to be room temp. It makes it easier when it's room really temp because it's softer yeah. already to help out when and it goes inside. The heat is hot. It's kind of yeah. See, because I enjoy like I enjoy this like pastry. I enjoy any type of pastries I'm doing. Yep. It's like cooking is fun. I like cooking. Don't get me wrong, but I don't know. I feel like making like bread. It's satisfying. But then again, to make it at home is different than making it at a restaurant. Because you, know I mean? yeah, you, you are here waking up at one in the morning, going there to make all this to sell. But me, if I'm making it, you know, wake yeah. up whatever time, take my time. It's like, like I told you, I made the banana bread. I took yeah. my time with it. I woke up, I'm like, oh, there's, there's this, like leftover banana. You know what? I'm just make it. It came out good. Yeah. All right, so we continue until it's all melted all the way. Yep, so it's all melted all the way. And once it's done, we'll take it off the heat. Okay. I'm just gonna let it sit there cool down. Until like, at room temp again? Until it goes back to room temp again. So that usually takes about another hour or two. Okay. Get down to room temp again. All right, I'll cool it, hold on. You wanna cool it? So I'll work like, how, like how many do you make it like, like at a time? You just make it like a big batch? Uh, a couple hundred at a time. A couple hundred? A day or? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Everything's almost in bulks? Yeah, it's all bulks. I come in and just buy by the dozen, so it's got to make it by the dozen. That's good. Now we let it cool. Yeah. yeah. Normally it just takes a couple hours, like, let it sit there for like two hours. Yeah, because you, while it's cooling, you're doing something else. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So, 
yeah. It's usually what I'm doing in between cooking and uh, baking while things are cooling down, working on other stuff. Sometimes I have like three mixes going at once. Do you guys make malasadas over there? Uh, we used to. Used to? Yeah, yeah. We used to, that was during the time we had a lot more Portuguese and before we started slowly incorporating all the other stuff into it, the okay. French and the Italian stuff, so. Like when it comes to Italian, what do you make like it's the French? Uh, French, like uh, so we have croissants, we have eclairs. Everything but uh, scratch, right? Yeah, a lot of That's a lot of work. I'm just like, making shoe, because the shoe, you could do eclairs, you could do peripherals with it, so oh, it okay. helps out between to make other times other stuff in the mix, so. And then Italian, the cannolis, which is always fun. That's good. So you just add um So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add five eggs into it. Five eggs and we're gonna whisk it in all together and then we're gonna start baking it. Usually that takes how long? Uh, usually baking uh, takes about a half an hour to 40 minutes. Okay. Does it need to get when the inside does it need to like go out? Like, like clear or like, it? like on the inside doesn't need to be wet or like dry inside. You mean the, uh, the yeah, when you make it? When you make it? Yeah. Once it comes out, it you comes know what I mean? Because usually, you know, does it come like chocolatey or? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? No, it's just like it looks. Uh, in essence, it looks like like small little cakes. Like, okay. So instead of like you know, so they'll wind up doing. If you set the other too long, they'll okay. burn or they'll crack in the middle. Gotcha. It's one of those, so you have to be mindful all the time. So. The harder part, because it's red already, it's dark, so it's like the chocolate, so making sure when it's cooked properly, it's like anything else. Anything that's usually white, it's clear, it's easier to know when it's done. And time you anything like chocolate or red like this, gets gotcha. a little more complicated. Yeah, because like you said, it's red, but you know, the beans, it's not red, but if you look at it, yeah, it's, it, it's red. It's red. And it, it looks like, um, like guava. Like when you put on, on bread, yeah. <laughs> like the jam. Yeah, it looks like a so jam looks right like, now. Yeah, that's what it looks like. That's the reason why I have to make it into a paste. This way, once I'm breaking it down, so to, because if it's not, it's like I said, the gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Aspect of it. Plus, it's gluten free, so no flour or anything. So that's one of the highlights of this one for anyone who has that, those allergies. It's a big thing. Yeah. <clears throat> it needs to be complete, like room temp, right? Yeah, it should be ready. It's pretty good. Like, does the egg come Yeah, because this way, once you put the egg inside, this way, if it's still too hot, it's gonna. Gotcha, like, yeah, make it like, 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 like an omelet. And then, yeah, yeah. Some, gotcha. put an omelet inside, and that's the last thing you want is uh, gotcha. omelets to be made. All right, you wanna eat the egg? We can you learn that from, uh, <laughs> from experience? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just incorporate it all together. Yep, it's got to incorporate all together. So does the egg like brings out the flavor, or it just helps it bake? It helps it bake because well, there's really no lovely agents yeah. added okay. to it. So with the egg, it helps also wind up in that. And it softens it up too. So. Mm hmm And also not as dark as it will tell. Yeah. Uh, it that's it up. But once it cooks again, it'll be dark as it can be in the oven. So. Some disposable tins. No, those are small. Yeah. <laughs> we have so many different sizes and things that we make, so it's just one of those. How many you want to do? All of it? You could do like, a, I don't know, like a dozen, see how it goes from there. Okay. We just got to spray it down. All right. Because if you don't spray it, like anything else in the bacon, it gets it stuck. Sticks, yeah, obviously. Yeah, you yeah. can't have that. We'll spray it. Make sure you get all the edges. Oh, 
And you missed that one. There you go. And do you feel like all the way to the top or no? Yeah, we fill it to the top. So this way each one gets filled. Like when you, you do this all this by hand? We wound up because I have to do oh, it. Yeah, the, so I have pictures on, the, on. Oh, gotcha. Yes. That would make more sense. Because you can see like some part of the thick, some part of the thin. Yeah. But once it starts cooking, it'll wind up going all together. So. That's why it's very important to try to whisk as much as you can to try mm -hmm. to incorporate everything. Gotcha. That one keeps a little bit more on that one. Much easier this way. Oh yeah, that always happens. All right. Perfect. Now we just gotta pop them in. Bake it. Yep. And then you say it's forty-five minutes or thirty minutes? Well. 30 minutes. Okay. All right. Before it's cooked. All right, it's been 30 minutes. Let's okay. double check. All right. Oh, they look good. Yeah. They look good. Pull them out. Beautiful. Yeah. Would you let them rest or? Yeah, just gotta let it cool down or else you gotta. It just came out, so it's very hot. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Kevin. This looks delicious. Uh, besides this uh, dish, what other dish is a signature dish from the restaurant? Our uh, award-winning pastel de nata, as well as our casola. And, and what is the other one? The casola, a pulled pork sandwich that we want to have in. Oh, okay. Yep. So, Kevin, before we wrap it up, can you let us know what the hours of operation is for Europa and then what you have coming off in the future? Sure thing. We are open from uh, Monday through Saturday from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. and on Sunday from 6 a.m. to 1. And uh, for the future, we have uh, new signature drinks coming. We have new cafe menu items coming, such as a uh, traditional margarita pizza. So, Kevin, you are a small business owner. Yes. Any advice you have for some young entrepreneurs that want to do what you're doing? Yes, you have to be very adaptive. Uh, if you're not adaptive, it's, it makes it really difficult because you don't know what the day to day is going to bring you as well as the, the customers that will be coming in. So you have to know how to change and whether to, what needs to be changed to make the progression through. That's part of the, all the new stuff yeah. that we've brought in. So, so that's customer part of, service this is really important. important. Yes, very, very important. Well, Kevin, please accept our sincere thanks for being a feature uh, eater here at Bristol Community Cooking. We wish you all the best for a successful journey in your uh, bakery. Thank you. Appreciate Folks, by supporting a small business like Europa, you're also supporting the local community. Small business owners like Erica, Kevin, and Andrew love what they do, and they plan, play an important role in supporting their local communities. When it comes to showing your support for small businesses, it's important to do so, and not just to help them gain revenue, but stay operational and be part of the community. So I would highly encourage all of you to go and visit Europa and experience the fabulous food and service they offer at the restaurant. 
to all our viewers, thank you so much for watching this episode and stay tuned as we will bring another restaurant, another cuisine for you in the next episode of Bristol Community Cooking. Until then, bon appetit.